the body is a suit of clothes which the soul wears. And I thought it was very pertinent, uh, Shloka, because in the end, then what happens to our body and what we put on our body and the way we treat it is actually driven and coming from the soul. <laughs> With that, I think I'll leave Alga to start talking about her. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Wenda. And uh, a very good evening to all of you here today. Uh, the topic, Temples of the Body, Costumes of the Mind, I love the title. And then I thought of my fellow colleagues here. Notes of a serial dieter, Moda Goa, and Sringar, The Many Faces of Indian Beauty, which I've written from the point of view of Indian arts and aesthetics. And I was just wondering that how the hell do all three of us come together? Lots of misgivings and wondering just be jostled together. But the more I thought about it, I thought that, you know, this is the best way the organizers could have put us together. Because coming from a background of arts and aesthetics, being a trained art historian, working on many aspects of Indian sculpture and art, for me the human body becomes very, very important. Within the Indian tradition, even God is in the image of man. Whether it's Devi, and you look at Adi Shankaracharya's shlok on the Saundarya Lahiri, and you see this fantastic description of this great voluptuous goddess. And when I started actually reading Kali's lovely, elegantly designed book, and I started reading the way in a memoir that she's written, The Serial Diety, I thought of Purushat. Because when you start studying the Indian consciousness, you look at the four ashrams or the four aspects of life, which is Artha, Dharma, Karma and Moksha. And 